Hi there! Welcome to part 8 of my ongoing series covering all the music of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Let's jump in! With Pico now available to you, you decide it is time to leave Bill's Chocobo Ranch and head to the Mithril Mines. Psych! Slow down there, bud! With Chadley having now opened the floodgates on all the open world collectathons, side questathons, scanathons, killathons, and mini gameathons, if for even one minute you thought this was going to be a quick jaunty hop to the Mithril Mines, boy, are you in for a rude awakening. This is a far cry from Remake's relatively brisk pacing. So as you leave the Chocobo farm, Bill hands you a Poke Whistle you can use to call upon Pico at any time while exploring the grasslands. Hopping on Pico triggers our first track of today. This is our most faithful version of the Chocobo theme so far, with realistic sounding strings and a lead trumpet. It's sweeping and joyous and very short. Unlike most chocobo riding tracks in the series, this one is non-looping. It's a glorified jingle that knows when to call it quits. I think this is a fantastic decision that gives you the whimsy of hopping on your chocobo without having to sacrifice for too long the mood of the region's current soundtrack. The world of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is divided across several regions, and each one of them has its own chocobo to catch and chocobo jingle to hear. Interestingly, each version of the jingle is usually arranged by whichever composer or arranger is most featured or seemingly in charge of said region. This makes each chocobo jingle a sort of snapshot of the sound and feel of a region. Shotaro Shima dominates Chapter 2, so it makes sense this realistically orchestrated, uplifting arrangement would be done by him. It'll be fun to compare this jingle to the later ones, to see what other sorts of traits and styles of the arrangers we can pick out from the respective jingles. Once you've taken Pico for a quick spin, Billy encourages you to try out some time trial races to really get a feel for your chocobo. It's yee o'clock as the time trial starts and we get a more rocking version of the chocobo theme. We've got big drums and a big electric guitar, yeah, naturally, but don't forget the chugging organ lower in the mix. After the first verse, we bring in a goofy synth line that reminds you, in case you forgot, not to take any of these chocobo tracks too seriously. And then, if you're really bad at this minigame, you'll discover a frantic second verse with double-time drums, charitably trying to rise your adrenaline to get you to the finish line. The whole track is about a minute and a half long before looping, but most god gamers probably only heard the opening 30 seconds or so. I faintly recall hearing this track later on in the game, during, I don't know, some other chocobo shenanigans, so you're probably just expected to hear the whole loop later. Once you finally drag your chocobo butt across the finish line, it plays a results-style track. I was convinced this was just the whack -a box results track from Remake. And that's how I'd labeled it in my spreadsheet. But upon actually listening to the whack -a box track, as opposed to just going from memory, I realized it is in fact not that track at all. But it is just about the same chord progression as Remake's whack -a box Which leads me to believe Daiki Ishikawa at the very least co-wrote this Rebirth track. But since this new track didn't make it onto the Rebirth original soundtrack, Daiki Ishikawa's name isn't listed anywhere in the soundtrack liner notes. His name isn't listed in the game's credits either, so I don't know what's going on there. Okay, we have our chocobo. Cloud is now a free man to do as he pleases. At this point, yes, you could start making your way to Mithril Mines, but we've got plenty of music to cover before we go there. The world, or at least the grasslands, are our oyster. Thanks to the all-powerful Chad module, we can now go explore and activate Remna Wave Towers. Yes, that's Chadley's theme in there, but that's not all. 
After the tower is activated, the game's UI tells you you've completed a tiny, tiny sliver of the region's world intel. And did you catch that melody? But you're not just activating Remna Wave towers for the dopamine hit of hearing familiar melodies. Their secondary purpose is to reveal the location of other things you can interact with on the world map. That symbol there means there's a unique monster encounter. The one next to it says there's a life stream source nearby. So let's go through them. Oh, and speaking of open world melodies. Cloud and the gang go to investigate the unique monster encounter. And upon nearing the destination, you get a ping from the Chad module. It's Mai, Chadley's virtual AI assistant, twin, rival, whatever you want to call her. Her role in the game is to give you information about the various world report battles scattered across the world, and also to fight Chadley over Cloud's attention. The track that plays as she speaks to you, I suppose could be seen as Mai's theme of sorts, but to me it doesn't sound like that at all. It's a solid Shima-style build-up track, but it isn't remotely evocative of Mai's extremely bubbly personality, which on the one hand is a missed opportunity. On the other hand, considering how often you hear this track, it probably would have gotten old super fast. Here we go! Keeping it subdued like this was definitely the right call. Initiating the fight with the rare enemy type causes Let the Battles Begin, a Merc's Job, to play. This is the version from Remake that I highlighted back in Episode 4, that's used as the intro to the Materia Guardian fight. Shotaro Shima wrote four different arrangements of Let the Battles Begin for FF7 Remake, but a Merc's Job is the only one that adheres quite faithfully to the FF7 original. The other versions from Remake subvert the original in some pretty fun ways, but that's for another video. In the unlikely chance I ever get back to the FF7 Remake video series I had been planning before embarking on this scene-by-scene, track-by-track breakdown of Rebirth, I'll be sure to talk about it then. With that objective checked off our map, we move on to our next target. The helpful little red fox from Ghost of Tsushima has transformed into a little red bird in Rebirth, and this time he guides you to sources of the life stream. You'll know you're close because the region music fades out on approach, replaced with a new arrangement of the life stream. While not as well known as the main theme, Let the Battles Begin, Sephiroth's theme, the Lifestream leitmotif is still one of the most important ones in all of Final Fantasy VII. It's the first thing you hear when you start the game. It's the last thing you hear. And during the scene in Cosmo Canyon, where Bugenhagen explains to you the life stream and the nature of life and death, arguably the nucleus or thesis of the entire Final Fantasy VII experience, it plays the track Life Stream, one of my absolute favorite pieces from the original game. Shotaro Shima's arrangement of this piece is, as expected with his work, faithful and beautifully arranged, but this time I think a lot of the magic is lost. The original's fake synthetic strings layers, fake glockenspiel for the melody, and lack of much dynamic range, all concessions from the technology of the time, work in its favor, giving the track a certain immediacy and honesty, with its synthesized sounds evoking the more spatial, ponderous tones of a Blade Runner era Vangelis arrangement.
Shima's rebirth arrangement, he's logically mapped the synthesized instruments to what they were actually trying to evoke. The strings are actual strings now. The brightness and in-your-faceness of the fake glockenspiel is blended with a piano in the mix to make it less harsh. And Shima even added new, more complex, whispery synth pad layers in there as well. Spaciously mixed not to overwhelm, but to add depth. There is so much more going on in this Rebirth version, and as a one-to-one -one translation, I think I understand the reasoning behind just about every decision. Another example is the beautiful hand drum that briefly introduces every verse. This is the soul of the piece, but in Rebirth, it's been replaced with a single, wider, softer bass drum hit. Which, again, makes sense since the hand drum was likely just there to evoke Cosmo Canyon, where we are not at the present moment. So the changes are logical and arguably for the better, but to me it just doesn't sing like the original. But that's okay, right? This isn't supposed to be the live stream track from Cosmo Canyon. This is a new context, the soundtrack to a recurring open world mechanic. I shouldn't be so quick to compare this scene to a simple mini-game you're going to repeat ad nauseum. It's an unfair comparison, so I'm giving Shima the benefit of the doubt for now. A few months before Rebirth came out, my friend and I together made a bingo with our hopes, fears, and expectations for the upcoming game. One of my contributions was that the live stream, the, the track, the specific track, live stream, would be arranged with added depth and soul intact. This fonts of knowledge arrangement here certainly has added depth and complexity, but I would argue its soul is not intact. I'll be very, very curious to revisit this conundrum when we reach Cosmo Canyon and we get the proper version of Lifestream in episode, ooh, let's say episode 35. 35. That sounds about right. Okay, moving on. There are multiple live stream sources within a region, and after finding a few of them, Chadley is able to reveal the location of a dig site with some valuable junk in it. Reaching the dig site, we get bombarded with a huge bluesy funk track. Yeah, it's, it's a bit on the idiosyncratic side, but sure. The act of getting your chocobo to track sense and then pecking out treasures isn't a barrel of laughs, so the overly enthusiastic track is doing a fair bit of heavy lifting. I kind of assumed there'd be the chocobo motif in there, but doesn't seem like it. Or a reference to Final Fantasy IX's hot and cold chocobo minigame would have been fun as well, but that's alright. Another type of open world activity is scanning information on all powerful beings known as summons by gathering intel at their hidden sanctuaries. The grasslands are home to the powerful summon known as Titan. Approaching his sanctuary cues up a majestic, serious track worthy of him. This is a fantastic original Rebirth composition by Leo Udatani. Udatani is no stranger to video game scoring, having worked at Capcom, primarily for the Monster Hunter series, for well over a decade. Like many Japanese in-house composers, he's gone freelance during the last decade, resulting in a more varied portfolio, including the underrated Atelier Ryza series, Hi-Fi Rush, and even smaller indie projects, like Meg's Monster. Rebirth isn't Udatani's first contribution to the Final Fantasy series. His name is all over the arrangement credits of the recent Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster series, but this is his first foray in the world of Final Fantasy VII. Having Udatani not just arrange but compose a fairly prominent piece of music for Rebirth automatically puts him in a certain tier of, I don't know, importance within the project. But now I'm just blindly speculating. Anyhow, I think this is a great composition with a wonderfully catchy main verse. The 
tonally, compositionally, it reminds me a bit of Masayoshi Soken's style. If you told me this had first been written as a rejected location theme for Final Fantasy XVI, I'd believe you. When you actually activate the Sanctuary minigame, the track shifts to a completely different arrangement that strips back everything but the choir, strings, and rhythmic synth line. It's different enough that I'm going to call this a separate track. This version only plays during the minigame, so there's a good chance you didn't let it play out in full, but it's worth it. This is a gorgeous arrangement that, if you told me this had first been written as a rejected location theme from Xenoblade Chronicles, I'd believe that too. This track definitely makes my list of top 10 plus tracks I can't wait to get my ears on. With the intel on the Titans scanned, Chadley can now make the virtual battle against him a little bit easier. So let's head over to Chadley and give it a shot. Loading up the virtual Titan, we get a high octane battle arrangement of Udatani's Sanctuary track. But this one isn't handled by Udatani. It's handled by Ryo Furukawa, one of the unexpected standout stars from Final Fantasy XVI soundtrack. To quote my first Final Fantasy XVI video, Ryo Furukawa arranged a paltry four songs for Final Fantasy XVI, but they are among the best in the entire game. Logos, yes, but also the riddle, no risk, no reward, and a little something called Ascension. Needless to say, Furukawa's contributions to Final Fantasy XVI cannot be overstated. So imagine my surprise when I saw Furukawa's name all over the Rebirth soundtrack. He's credited with arranging around 20 tracks on the official soundtrack, and who's to say how many more that didn't make it onto the first release? This is fantastic news. I'll tell you right now, I don't think any of his Rebirth tracks reach the dizzying heights and spectacle of Ascension. The Riddle? But if you are a fan of No Risk No Reward, one of the best tracks from 16 in my opinion, you will likely be plenty pleased with his Rebirth contributions. And this Sanctuary battle track arrangement is as emblematic of that as any of them. Both tracks use big cacophonous brass for the lead melody. Both tracks use virtual orchestras that don't sound quite as good as Shima's real thing, but are certainly a lot more realistic than the sample libraries Yoshitaka Suzuki is still cooking with. Furukawa has a lot of control over his virtual instruments, and I think they sound, for the most part, plenty convincing. Certainly convincing enough. The third telltale Furukawa sign is the always rousing rhythm section that just keeps things moving. The interplay of brass and percussion is electrifying and gives his arrangement such a sense of momentum. Whether fighting Titan or any of the other summon battles you'll eventually take on in Rebirth, Furukawa nails the gravity of Uratani's composition, as well as the spectacle of the dramatic battle itself. I'm looking forward to covering future Udatani and Furukawa tracks, but that's where we're going to leave things for this episode. But before I go, two quick pieces of housekeeping. The comment section is always keeping me humble. The user Rene, or Ren, pointed out that the version of the Final Fantasy VII main theme I covered in the last episode isn't a new Rebirth composition, but is simply one of the versions from Remake with the intro and outro lopped off. I could tell there was something off about that fade out loop, but I didn't make the connection. Rookie mistake. I fixed my spreadsheet with this new information. Thanks, Renee. 
or Ren. Also, last week I was watching the four-part mini-documentary series Inside Final Fantasy VII Rebirth that features a ton of brief interviews with people from various parts of the Rebirth development team. It's a fun little series with a few cute insights, and all throughout they use various tracks from the Rebirth soundtrack. Because this is a Square Enix produced series that came out before the release of the original soundtrack, I'm assuming the editor had access to the raw audio files. He wasn't doing a, a playthrough of the game with the voice and sound effects turned off just so he could capture some clean footage. No, he's, he's got the real thing. Okay, okay, sorry, I'm getting off my point. My point is that in part four, during an interview with Zack's English voice actor, they play this track. Yeah, that's what I called the back half of Yoshinori Nakamura's Call Me Skedaddling in my part six video. During that video, I mentioned being torn as to whether this part of the track was just a coda of a longer piece, or if it was a separate track. To me, this documentary series confirms that this is in fact a separate piece of music. I don't think this video editor took that longer Nakamura track and decided to just splice in the ending of that track for this sequence because he thought it sounded good. No, that's just a track he picked from some master list, I think. So I've fixed my spreadsheet with this new information. Thanks, likely overworked editor at Square Enix Marketing. All right, that's it for today. We are now more than 50% through chapter two. Two episodes left. Catch you soon. Bye. <laughs>